Hello, I am taking on a challenge to beat every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the fourth episode. The next two games are Space Fever and Color Space Fever. The year is 1978. Arcades were still young. Games such as Atari's Pong had seen moderate success, but it was nothing compared to the game that was about to revolutionize the industry. And that game was, of course, Taito's Space Invaders. Space Invaders ushered in a golden era for arcades, an era marked with rapid growth, technological advancements, and newfound cultural relevancy. Now, you may be wondering, why am I talking about Space Invaders? Wasn't this supposed to be a video on Space Fever? You see, once again, Nintendo's primary focus during this era was to copy other successful titles in hopes of capturing a similar level of success. With Space Invaders becoming a knockout success, Nintendo created Space Fever, a game that was almost entirely identical to Space Invaders. And I don't just mean loosely inspired here either. Put them side by side, and it's clear just how much inspiration Nintendo took with this one. At least with the Color TV game, Nintendo obtained a license to publish their version. Now, you may be wondering, why are there two games in this video this time? That's because, in addition to Space Fever, Nintendo also released Color Space Fever later in the year. While these games technically have different titles, they are essentially the same game, with Color Space Fever adding, well, colors, obviously. Generally, I do plan on playing all remastered versions of a game, so playing both here I think counts. That being said, they are so similar, and I played them one after another, that I decided to lump them into one video. Now, on to the actual gameplay. Right when you put your coins in, you'll notice that there are three game modes, A, B, and C. I decided for this game that I wanted to beat at least one wave in all three modes. Since it seemed like the most reasonable way to approach the game, I decided to start with mode A. Little did I know, this was a big mistake. You see, the big unique thing about Space Fever was its three game modes. I think because of this, they made the default mode something different than how Space Invaders works. So, what makes this mode so different? In Space Invaders, the alien invaders move in one big unit from the left to the right. Once they hit the end, they move closer to the player. The objective is to shoot all the aliens before they reach the player. I later found out this was essentially how game mode C worked in Space Fever. Guess they wanted to hide just how obvious of a ripoff it was behind the other modes. Game mode A, however, featured a slightly different movement pattern. They still moved left to right, and then forwards once they hit the end, but the invaders moved in two separate units, one on the left and one on the right. This may not seem like much, but I later realized that this generally made them move forwards much quicker, since there was much less ground for the invaders to cover. I didn't have much experience with Space Invaders, uh, I mean Space Fever, so with the added difficulty of Game Mode A, the game was kicking my butt. I didn't even come close to beating a wave on the first attempt. I still had 9 aliens to blast through. I struggled with the precise laser beams, and there was a key strategy I had not discovered at this point. Because of this, I faced defeat after defeat. I tried various different strategies to see what worked. I tried destroying one entire unit before moving on to the other, but this didn't seem to have much of an effect. I also tried intentionally destroying some of the barriers so that I could have more opportunities to shoot, but it wasn't enough. After seven grueling attempts, the best I could do was bring it down to five invaders left. At this point, I decided to try out the other modes and see if they were any easier. Who knows, maybe I would learn something from them. As you expect, game mode B worked a little differently from A. The enemies no longer moved in two separate units. Instead, they only showed up one line at a time. On the surface, this doesn't seem all that different, since I usually didn't shoot the units in the back until later anyway. However, the less invaders that remain, the faster the aliens move. This meant that as a row was shrinking, they would often move faster and fill in the next line. I also found out here that this also meant that if there was one unit left, it moved crazy fast. This worried me a bit at first, but I was doing well enough by the end that I still managed to pull through. Despite the fact that having fewer units at once would generally make them faster, this mode was much easier, and I beat it on my first try. I didn't know it yet, but the aliens moving in one unit makes such a huge difference. Finally, having a taste of success, I decided to try game mode C. As I alluded to before, this mode is nearly identical to Space Invaders. The invaders move in a single unit, and all of them are visible right from the start. I didn't have my head wrapped around it, but this meant that this mode was even easier than B since it took longer for the aliens to start moving faster. I once again beat this mode on my first try. Feeling good about my skills, I went back to game mode A. I did much better this time, but I still was not able to reach success. To my dismay, I lost my first attempt with only one alien left, right after missing a crucial shot that would have won me the game. 
After this, I just faced defeat after defeat. I started trying out a strat where I would clear out two rows at a time, but it wasn't doing me any good. Finally, after many, many failures, I started putting the pieces together. By destroying the invaders in vertical lines instead of horizontal, it would take longer for the invaders to reach the turnaround point and move forwards. I have a feeling this is a key strat players of Space Invaders already know, but I was inexperienced and had to figure it out on my own. Finally, I was having a good run. My intended strategy was to end on the left, since when you die, you restart on the left, but somehow I messed up and found myself ending on the right side. When there was only one unit left, the worst case scenario happened. I got hit by an enemy laser and died. I thought it was over, but somehow I clutched it out and fired a moving shot with the exact right timing, earning myself that sweet, sweet victory. With that victory under my belt, it was time to move on to Color Space Fever. As you might expect, this was the exact same as Space Fever, but this time it actually had color. There's not a whole lot else to say about it. While it did feature colors now, I noticed the colors were still pretty limited. It seemed that each row supported only a single color, and the aliens would simply change to the row's color as they moved down. You also saw this in the laser as it moved upwards. I don't know, maybe this was a design decision and not a hardware limitation, but I found it kind of funny regardless. Knowing that game mode A was the hard one this time around, I decided to start with game mode B. At this point, not only did I have better strats, but I was getting much better at the game overall. I trounced game mode B on my first try. Game mode C was even easier this time around, and I managed to beat three waves in one go. Immediately after beating wave three, I humorously died instantly to the first alien shot. Unfortunately, game mode A wouldn't give me that first try victory. I lost on my first attempt, but it was largely due to me hitting the enemy lasers and not because I ran out of time. Thankfully, I didn't struggle nearly as much this time around, and I beat it on my second attempt. With that, both Space Fever and Color Space Fever were complete. Before getting into my review, I have a confession. I'm not a big fan of high score chasers, which unfortunately includes almost all of the games made during the arcade era. I prefer having an ending to work towards, and I generally don't have a ton of motivation to restart everything and beat my previous high scores. Additionally, I've never really liked how monetization works in arcades. I prefer to just own a game rather than have the looming thought that every failure means more money for my pockets. It's not entirely a fair comparison, but in some ways it reminds me of how the modern mobile market often works, with games like Candy Crush requiring you to either wait or pay extra money to continue playing. Thankfully, I'm not playing the games in actual arcades, so I don't have to worry about this, but I still think it's worth considering since a lot of these games are designed with that concept in mind. I share all this just so you know that I have some inherent bias against the structure of arcade games, and you'll need to take that into consideration when looking at my scores. Maybe my perspective is a bit unfair, since I wasn't around at the time to really experience the wonder of arcades during this era, and perhaps some of these games deserve more credit than I'm going to give them. Regardless, this is still my personal opinion on the games, and if you're a big fan of arcade games, it might still be worth checking some of these out, even if I give them low scores. With all that being said, I actually enjoyed this one more than the previous Color TV games. There is a lot more depth here, and I generally enjoyed learning and developing my strategies. However, a lot of this is more thanks to the ingenuity of Space Invaders than anything Nintendo did. Nintendo's biggest contributions, the three game modes, does add some variety, but I can't help but wish they reversed the game mode's order so that they naturally climbed up in difficulty. Like with many arcade games, if you're not super into beating your previous high scores, your interest will start to wane after repeating the same loops after a while. I have a hard time knowing how to give a score to a game that rips off another game so strongly, but I ultimately still enjoyed my experience with the game, so I gave it a 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on the next one. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it'll help the channel grow and motivate me to continue the series. I hope I'll see you in the next step of my quest to beat every Nintendo game.